Welcome everyone. It's time for another fun video where we're going to make pesto genovese. Now this recipe is very special because it's the real thing. Our friends Giovanna and Alessandro who live in Genova gave us the tips and the tricks. So let's get started. As usual we'll run through the ingredients. Here we have a, a large bunch of basil which I have already taken the leaves off. And they said, only use the leaves, do not use the stems. 125 grams of, in this case, grana padano, or you can use pecorino cheese or parmigiano or a combination of all three, but just 125 grams. I'm using walnuts because I don't have pine nuts, but I also like the woody taste that walnuts give a pesto. And some really beautiful quality olive oil. And then to mix everything together, you can use a good old fashioned bottle and pestle or the electric mini food processor. First, you add all of your basil into your little mini food processor. Notice I took the easy way out. I find that when I'm smashing wet things in a mortar and pestle, it's just miserable. So um, then we add our walnuts. I've toasted mine because I prefer it, that flavor, but raw walnuts are just as fine, or pine nuts. Then I add some olive oil. I would say three tablespoons. And we start to pulse. Ooh, la, 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 la. There we go. It's not liquid enough. And back to pulsing. Okay, when it gets to be about that consistency and that color, it's a good time to add the cheese. Now our friends do not add cheese to their pesto. They simply just add it onto the pasta if they're having pasta and pesto, but I like to mix mine in completely because often I use just a little bit of pesto at a time. Sometimes I add it on a salad caprese. I find it's such a nice addition with the beautiful tomatoes, or I add it on top of pasta or on big crusty chunks of bread. <laughs> oh, need a bit more olive oil. Uh, you have to just judge as you do it. Give it a little mix. And we're done. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.